Today's lesson is on the Renaissance period and the Protestant Reformation and the emergence of uh, the Catholic response to the Protestant Reformation. First off, let's start off with what the Protestant Reformation is. Really an exciting time in the history of Western civilization. Uh, it primarily started in the early 16th century, and it was a movement which pushed for reform and change of certain ideas and practices of the Roman Catholic Church. The, the gentleman who spearheaded it was Martin Luther, and it began in 1517, um, and Luther believed that there were two major violations that the Catholic Church had committed. First was the sale of indulgences, which was paying money for church pardons. And the second was nepotism, giving church positions to relatives, thereby tilting the axis in favor of the church. And, and obviously where money was involved, money and favors were um, were mutually explained between uh, the, the people that the church wanted in, in powerful positions. There's yet a third position or a third point which Martin Luther objected to, and that was that the Bible uh, should be the final authority of the church instead of the Pope, which was the Catholic position. So one more time, the Bible became the final authority of the church, not the Pope, and sale of indulgences and nepotism. Now, there was a number of factors which led to the Reformation period. I want to first cover economics. With economics, rulers became upset by the use of economic power and wealth that the church had established. Politically, many felt that the Pope had too much power. It was during the Renaissance period, of course, that humanism and individualism uh, became very powerful concepts and variables that changed uh, how people thought. Well, humanism was the ability of humans to think and reason for themselves, and that, indeed, the church should not have the powerful influence that it wielded during the Middle Ages. Finally, previous church problems and reform attempts became also very important when we look at the Reformation period, specifically the Babylonian captivity of 1309 to 1377, and the Great Schism of 1379 to 1417. The immediate impact of Luther's actions, number one, uh, Luther ends up establishing his own church in Germany. Uh, two, it led to other churches being established. King Henry VIII broke with, church, with the Roman Catholic Church because of marriage problems. And because he defined authority of the Pope, he ends up divorcing Catherine of Aragon. And, of course, as we know, he gets um, excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church because of his actions. Parliament ends up passing the Act of Supremacy, making the Anglican Church of England independent from the Pope. But nonetheless, the king is still the head figure in England. Well, like I started to say a moment ago, the Catholic Church was greatly in, in uproar over this. Luther ends up getting excommunicated. The Council of Trent is formed. And the Council of Trent defends the accusations lodged against the Roman Catholic Church. So, it becomes a vehicle by which the Roman Catholic Church implements a group of people to sit and figure out what to do with the number of people who are leaving the Catholic Church due to Martin Luther's challenge. So, obviously, during the Counter-Reformation period, which is when the Council of Trent really gets underway here, the Church upholds traditional beliefs and practices, including the power of the Pope over the Church, and the importance of good faith and good works, which are necessary ingredients for salvation to happen. The Inquisition occurs, um, and this is the time when church courts are established to try heretics. And the Jesuit order is founded in 1534. Well, now let's take a look at the results of the Reformation period. First, it shattered religious unity. Second, monarchs gained power and wealth as strength of Roman Catholic Church began to decline, largely because people were questioning 
and undermining the authority of the Pope. And progress, tremendous progress was made in education and literacy. Next, let's take a look at the age of exploration. There are at least five major reasons for the age of exploration. First, the Renaissance spirit of inquiry and curiosity. Second, scientific advances in navigational instruments and improvement in sailing vessels. Third, an interest in finding new routes to South and East Asia. Fourth, the desire for land and resources by new nation states being slowly evolving in Europe. And finally, many adventures were stirred by the desires of gold, God, and glory, the three Gs. Well, the results of the age of exploration. First, the establishment of colonial empires. Second, colonies enabled nations of Western Europe to acquire sources of raw materials which they turned into manufactured goods. Colonies developed wealth, and the commercial revolution exploded. So what was the commercial revolution? First, growth of trade within Western Europe increases. Capitalism becomes the economic system. The Atlantic Ocean replaces the Mediterranean Sea as a hub of economic activity. And the development of mercantilism. Now, mercantilism is an economic theory that believed it was important for a nation to acquire overseas colonies if they were going to perpetuate their own survival. This was necessary since the overseas colonies had valuable resources such as gold, silver, and raw materials. Yeah, raw materials. Acquiring these resources would lead a country to become more powerful and more imperialistic. This directly led to an increase in manufactured goods, and this in turn increased demand for these goods by consumers. Now let's look at the effects of commercial revolution on Europe and New World. Well, there was a number of different effects. Uh, I've labeled five. First, the power of several European nations and their absolute monarchs ended up increasing. Second, trade in overseas empires made some nations such as England, Spain, and France wealthy and very powerful. Second, Trade in overseas empires made some nations such as England, Spain, and France wealthy and, and very powerful. Second, I'm sorry, third, demographic shifts occurred. Fourth, European culture spread to other areas around the world. And fifth, and finally, there was a new production system known as the domestic system which developed in Europe. Okay, that's the lesson today on Renaissance, Reformation, Counter-Reformation, and the Commercial Revolution on Europe and New World.